Take two of the video. Yes, there's drunk screaming people. Here we go. Make up your mind how many channels you're going to use. I'm just throwing this in. I don't have a choice if YouTube would leave me alone and if people would stop fake flagging my channels. I wouldn't need to say channels. I would have one channel. I want my old channels back. I'm happy with one. I don't need to have three. This is worthless to me. Okay, this video's title is about Lloyd England at the Pentagon, or near it. He's a cab driver on September 11th when the attacks happened. He went from being a fair to fair bread earner to being on national TV in some cases, being interviewed and being the center of attention for a short time. In 2006, an interview happened uh, many years after 9-11 took place and he is saying stuff that could be interpreted in more than one way, which is the absolute bread and butter of conspiracy theorists. If something is even slightly ambiguous, or if you can twist it into being so, especially by editing, it will be. He was a struggling hard worker and he is saying that this is outside of his pay grade now and he wants nothing to do with it. Basically, he's had years of being asked about this randomly by people and he's kind of over it. Um, while off camera he's skeptical, but while on camera he stick, quote unquote sticks to the narrative as people's assertions. But this is from being, for years and years of being asked about this over and over again, and basically having effectively, whether he liked it or not, ended up practicing what he would say because he's had to say it so many times. That's it. If you ask me a hundred times, where were you born? If I was going to tell you, I'd tell you the exact time and location and everything. Verbatim. It's like if you've had to repeat your own uh, social security number verbally, which is stupid and shouldn't be allowed to be done under any conditions where you would need to have it. You remember it's XXX blah 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 blah. You, you remember it. It's a cadence thing. That's why he sounds so poised and everything. But when he's off camera, or more accurately when they're recording him without talking to him about it being an interview, he expresses doubt and he's skeptical. This doesn't add up to some sort of covert confession of active involvement or being in the know. He's just a random person like everybody else that day. One of the problems with the 9-11 truth movement is you literally have to tell every single person who experienced this and have exactly the same thing to say about it. The majority of the population who are, were there that day looking up at the first impact by accident and later on seeing the second impact and realizing, no, this wasn't an accident, this is an actual attack. You literally have to confound all of that. You have to literally ignore the majority experience of reality for some bastardized reason that you've invented that has gone way off the rails a long time ago. It's like forgetting that chemtrails were originally invented as a marketing term to sell poultices and stuff for purging your system of toxins. Um, what I'm, what I, what I see in the in the bits of the interview, I can see that aren't really badly edited because everybody keeps re-editing this. Is hindsight combined with the haze of time, and him being wary of the subject. I'm not seeing complicity or someone confessing. And I'm sorry, but I'm going to have to do this from now on. If you type in the word confess, I might start word filtering it. It has a religious connotation. It's used literally by people who are lying more often than not when they assert someone's confessed to something. It's sort of like confirmed. It's a word that never is used for the word it means. Whenever I look up anything that says, oh, this is a confirmed story, it's never confirmed or has any backing. I'm, I'm tired of hearing people, it's like the word truth being misused to tell a lie. Stop it. Getting fed up with it. He didn't confess to anything. Off camera, he's like, well, I know what happened and I know what I was there, I know what happened, but still have doubts because he had a limited experience like everybody else. I was in Portland, Oregon during all of this. I didn't firsthand witness it and neither did most of you. And the ones who did firsthand witness it, if you can find someone who says, well I think there's, that there's something to this conspiracy theory, ask them where they were at the exact moment each thing happened and what time of day it was. Every time I've run into this, there's, there are people who were actually there and, and actually saw this who are still skeptical and sometimes they're conspiracy theorists. Mostly because they're in shock and acknowledge it, by the way. But the rest of them can't tell you where they were at the exact moment. I showed up slightly late, 15 minutes late, uh, to work. 
I know the exact minute I was told this. I also remember spending the rest of the day trying to digest this and rationalize it by downloading blueprints of buildings and apparently even then I was like this. Anyway, someone says, I saw the interview with NSERV. I believe you said the conspiracy with 9-11 and Building 7 and the towers was just that they weren't up to fire code and that's what they're hiding. No, I'm saying I'm, that may, may have come out that way. What I'm saying is, if you're going to look for a conspiracy, you want to blame on these particular people. That's the only thing I can see, because the buildings weren't really up to code. If you want to have another conspiracy, divide and concur. Hey, take every incident in the United States and plant stories in popular media and tabloids about it being a false flag. It doesn't matter what the hell it is. Get people in the United States against each other and make sure they don't support their government. Oh, that sounds like a real conspiracy, doesn't it? It sounds like a really useful and effective one so far, doesn't it? Does that bug you? Does it hurt? All of you out there, I mean, we're all getting manipulated. Don't claim mainstream media is manipulating you and then somehow exonerate fucking Putin. I'm really fed up with this shit. But anyway, let's just continue. And yes, also, let's not forget the actual perpetrators that day, radicalized Muslims, also do propaganda. Stop listening to terrorists. Anyway. Well, I came across this other video and thought of that comment that Wabtec made and wondered if I, if Wabtec had seen it. And then he says, I don't think anyone could find any doubt after seeing this video. I do. Maybe you could say this doesn't prove a plane didn't hit the towers. No, it has literally nothing to do with it. It's, a, it's an individual person's assertion versus literally thousands of people who see something that contradicts it. Why do you look for the minority opinion and champion it? We all like the underdog. But this is literally the odd one out kind of thing. It doesn't work. This is like literally looking for every drug on the planet that is very consistently doing its job. And then you decide, let's use, let's use marijuana to cure cancer. Marijuana does not cure cancer. It doesn't. Marijuana products do not cure, quote unquote, cancer. There's hundreds, if not thousands, of varieties of cancer, and it doesn't cure them. It has an effect on a person who's recovering from treatment for cancer, and it might cause cancer less often in very specific cases versus tobacco, for a very annoying and very sickening reason, but it does work. That doesn't mean it cures a cancer, and I'm really fed up with hearing that. But hey, let's look for the one Petri dish that showed a change in the cancer cells instead of the vast majority that it did not. Hey, let's ignore the fact that you have an 80% chance of curing cancer now. Let's ignore conventional medicine that actually works for, for a very large number of cancers. Let's throw it all out and scream Big Pharma and light up a doobie and not give a damn about our kids and family members and old man whatever dying. Let's just keep ourselves com you know, comfortable and happy and delirious. Maybe you could say this doesn't prove a plane didn't hit the towers. But if it was staged, I would assume it's all, it all was, I don't know, lol. Why would you say it was staged? Why, why, why does it have to be staged? The video that was pointed to is someone starting off with the assumption that they're going to disprove September 11th even happened. And they're throwing hundreds of different things at it just so that they can try to beat down what happened. It's not reality denial. It's reality war. There is a war for your mind. And it's done by people who lie. And they're not the ones you think it is. Thought you might find it interesting. I got through a few minutes of it, and then I looked for a synopsis of it, and it's been debunked repeatedly. Uh, the interview is said to have happened in 2006, and by that point, um, this older guy is seeing back through the fog of time and is experiencing hindsight. It's usually 2020. But everybody else who saw this happen would disagree with any kind of assertion that it didn't happen. Thanks for watching. Have a good day. Good luck with that.